Greetings, Zero here. Welcome back to the Steel Mile type run of EV Emerald. Last time, we left Marvel City behind. Okay. We beat up a news crew, discussed some bugs in this hack, and made our way to Route 113. The main objective of this segment is simple. Catch a Skarmori. This will bring the number of Pokemon on my team up to three. There's also a few items I want to get, but we'll talk about that later. So, this first segment is probably just going to be me running around in this patch of grass right here. Trying to find a Skarmory. This could take a while. It's not an especially common Pokemon. Oh, and by the way, there's something like... There are literally thousands of possible patterns for Spinda. And, uh... There's a lot of them. In one run, I actually found a shiny Spinda. Wasn't able to use it because it's a monotype and it wasn't of the right type. But, eh, it was fun. Cool. Anyway, I guess I will cut until I find a Skarmori. Well, speak of the devil! <laughs> and he shall appear! Okay, let's play it safe, use a move that shouldn't be very very effective, so that way I can chip away at its health. Alright, that should be good enough. Let's go with a Great Ball. Yeah, I bought, I bought a whole lot, bunch of Great Balls back when I was training in Marvel City. I could theoretically weaken it a little more, but I don't want to risk getting a high damage roll or a crit, which knock it out. Okay, you know what? Fuck it. Let's try. Let's go for an Ultra Ball. Oh, come on! Stubborn little bastard. Are right, you not? Know, no. Come on. Get in the ball. There you go. That's more like it. But what to call you? Ah. Hmm. What to call you? Hmm. Hmm. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Ah, fuck it. We're gonna call you Ace's Eye after the Iron Maiden song. And now I will be right back as I go and get Ace's Eye, the Skarmory, out of my PC. And we're back! So, a couple of things happened in the time between the last cut and now. First of all, I did some grinding, brought Skarmory up to be about in line with the level of the rest of my team. I also went and got the Zigzagoon from the daycare, <clears throat> as they are now at level 21. At this point, they can start to pick up rare candies. That can come in handy later. So, let us proceed on our way. <clears throat> it's also learned one different move since I first got it. It originally had Peck, but now has Air Cutter. Oh, and on that note, I also taught 
uh, Matang, Secret Power, and place a takedown. Because I'm never going to use takedown again. But Secret Power, situationally, it might be useful. Let's use this against a trainer for the first time. It might actually be Skarmory that I have to use against Flannery. I kind of have an idea of how I'm going to deal with her, but we'll have to see how well it works. A bunch of hidden items here, of course. There's neither. And here we get a Pokemania. Usually they're going to use rare Pokemon, but not always. Sometimes it's just the more monstrous Pokemon or whatever. Oh yeah, and Air Cutter hits both opponents in double battles. And it has a higher crit rate. The downside is, one, it's not very powerful by itself, and it can miss about 10% of the time. wasn't a crit. Hmm. Okay. Did more damage than I thought it would. A lot of good that's gonna do you, Aron. Mm -hmm. Now we have another battle. Yeah, and the bit where they tell you about collecting volcanic ash, well, there's a purpose for that. You can get certain items after you get the soot sack later in, on this route just by walking through the uh, grass. Now, the items that I want to get don't require a whole lot of it, relatively speaking, but if you really have no life, well, see, air cutter can miss, you can get Decorations for your secret base, made out of glass. Considering that this involves having an entire desk made out of blown glass, you can see why you need a lot of it. Seriously, can you imagine how expensive a, gl a blown glass desk would be? Like, that would probably cost more than a car. Okay, so we can go up here, or, oh, no, never mind, we go back here to see the item, and it is a nugget. We can sell that. Or as it's known in the Japanese versions, gold balls. Stop laughing, it's not funny. A 
And now we move on. Yeah, we already took him on. Oh, you're gonna need a lot more on a parasol to protect your pneumal from me. Take on these two, and then we'll go get the item on our right. Don't we use secret power? The animation changes based on where you use it, too. Oh, crit. Nice. Which means the power isn't going to be divided, and it'll all hit Spinda. Not quite a one shot, unfortunately. Spinda. Again, another awkward cut there, just because we're coming up on ten minutes. Actually, we're a bit over eight minutes, but... Bandicam being Bandicam. Now we're gonna go in here and grab ourselves the soot sack. We're gonna have to spend a while coming back to this route to gather the ash we need for the flutes. The blue, yellow, and red ones are the ones that I want. But, well, that can come later. Next up, we have another ninja boy. These guys pretty much exclusively use poison types or, well, Actually, specifically, it's the coughing line and the Ninkata line. You poor bastard. There's pretty much nothing he can do to me. Because I'm using only steel types, so he can't poison me. Oh, he's gonna blow himself up. That's cute. Hmm. Crit, but still. Barely scratched it. Yeah, Skarmory was a monster when it was introduced in Generation 2. In fact, there was a rather, well, a rather infamous stall strategy in Gen 2 called Scarm Bliss, involving the use of Skarmory, Blissey, Spikes, and stuff like that. The Generation 2 meta was very, very stally in competitive play. That's why you don't see that many people play it compared to Gen 1, Gen 3, Gen 4, Gen 5, stuff like that. Basically, battle, like, if you wanted to play on a, a showdown, you're not going to find that many people playing Gen 2, just because of how tedious it can be. And that's is the move I'm going to need to take on Flannery. Yes, I'm going to be using Double Team. 
I'd rather not, because you're relying on luck. But... Them's the brakes! Oh, right, forgot. Pick up. We don't need agility. It's fast enough. Got escape rope. Yeah. Rare candy! There we go. I think it's a four percent chance to pick up rare candies at, at this level range. Uh okay. Now, just for the next battle, I'm going to swap out to Alice here because well. This guy, if I recall correctly, uses Auron and, well... Yeah, they're very tanky. <clears throat> yep, Auron. Down you go. Level up. Nine more levels, you evolve into Agron. Let's put you back in the front. Here we have another double battle. These two aren't here in Ruby and Sapphire. I think they were added just in Emerald. Alright, you know, we're just gonna gang up on... Meryl. As I had said in a previous episode, when it comes to double battles, I usually try to eliminate one partner first. That way I can just gang up on the other one, while only taking one hit every turn. Because the other trainer never seems to have the presence of mind to think about sending out their other Pokémon. Not that they have any reason not to, considering I'm using two of mine and I'm just one person. There you go. Path is clear to Fall Arbor Town. But first, uh, there's an item over here. Hyper Potion. That'll come in handy. Now we go into here, and... Hmm, I wonder who that is? Why, it's Lanette. She's the lady that maintains the PC network in Hoenn. We'll talk to her later. Let's heal real quick. Then I'll put away a couple of items I don't need. And next time I come back, I will be getting myself loots. So, I will see you in a sec. Say, remember when I told you guys I would cut back in if something interesting happened while I was grinding or doing other stuff off camera? Well, this happened! I can't use it in this run, because it is, well, not steel type, but fuck it, I'm catching it. It's a shiny.
You know what? If I can find an excuse to use it as an HM slave, I will. And as for you, well, uh, hmm. Where do I call you? Hmm. We'll call you Boo, as in bamboo, the things that pandas eat. Even though they're a bunch of fat fucks that. Let me put it this way, they won't even fuck to save their own species. They are such a waste of money. And that's all I'm gonna say on the matter. Seriously, I don't like handles. Anyways, I guess now we'll be cutting again. See you in a sec. And now we should have enough ashes to get the first flute, the blue flute. Which is basically the polka flute from Gen 1 and its remakes. It's a reusable item that wakes your Pokemon up. I guess we're getting a, uh, Bloot Flute instead. Yeah, I guess it's a Chinese knockoff. But, regardless, it does the job. And now we get the Yellow Flute, which is a reusable item to cure confusion. Two flutes down, and one to go. Another cut in. Something you can sometimes get from Zigzagoon or any other Pokemon pickup is a King's Rock. This might come in handy later. And now we pick up the last of the flutes. The red flute is a reusable item that treats attraction. Which is useful because so far, well, the only Pokemon of mine that have a gender at all are both male. Anyways, we're almost done. There's just one more thing I want to show you guys. The last thing I'm going to show you guys is this house right here. You go inside, talk to this guy. If you have a heart skill, he can teach you any moves that uh, your Pokemon may have forgotten. There's no moves that I really want to teach right now, so we're not going to do that. So I think we're going to wrap this up here. Uh, if you like what you see, be sure to comment, subscribe, maybe check out my Rumble page. And I will see you all next time.